she reluctantly agrees and makes her departure with one last promise. If you screw me over, I am going to kill you. What up, what up, what up? Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a long, long time since I have updated you on Shadow of a Doubt. So this, my friends, this is part five. But what we're gonna do is, we're gonna call this season two, episode one. But also for those of you who have been keeping up, we could also call it part five, whatever you wanna do. But also I like season two. We're gonna do a really quick recap. Thank you so much for your patience though. I just wanna say as a side note, your girl just released an album and that is a major project and it took up a significant portion of my time. The project is complete, the album is released. I can now begin to devote the time that I need to devote back to my storytelling and I will try to pump out as much as I can and have a store of it so that the next time I work on a large project, I don't leave you guys high and dry. Okay, back to the recap. Now, in the most previous episode, what was discovered was that Michael became aware that his wife that he had an affair on is pregnant. He ended things with Elizabeth and the ghost, Isabella, whom he saw for the first time, warned him that with the rage that is emanating off of Elizabeth due to Michael ending things with him, she will take that rage, Elizabeth, and do harm to his wife. And that now means that Isabel is encouraging him to do harm to Elizabeth, AKA end her life. If he doesn't do something to her, she will do something to his wife and he will live a world of regret. Here's another minor issue. Elizabeth is Bella's cousin. Isabella is Bella's aunt. They're all related. Michael just wanted to keep it in the family. That wasn't funny, sorry. Just wanted to throw that in there. Anyways. So now, Michael is on his way to meeting up with his wife who alluded to the fact that she was open to giving him another chance, but only because she wants to keep the baby. The baby is the priority and she doesn't want to do it by herself. Also, she still loves the man and that's the reason why she's so devastated, okay? So he gets there, he calls her, he tells her he's outside, you know, he doesn't really know what he's walking into because he's unsure of whether Bella told her parents exactly what happened. So he wants her to meet him outside before he just waltz into her parents' home as if he has the privilege to do that, as if he's entitled, you know, he's humbling himself. And so she meets him outside and he wastes no time in telling her exactly what happened. So now Bella's like, wait, 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 wait. So Isabella wants us to kill Elizabeth, her only living daughter? That doesn't sound right. That doesn't seem like it makes any sense. Look, this was the first time I even caught sight of the thing, okay? None of this is making any sense to me. I'm not crazy about the idea of ending anyone's life. And so then he brought up the fact that if they do not end Elizabeth's life, Isabella alluded to the fact that Elizabeth will end Bella's life. And now Bella's angry all over again. Michael, for a woman to get this angry, she had to have fallen in love with you. How long was this affair going on for? What impressions did you give her? What kind of hope did you give her? Were you even planning on what? And all of these were just spewing out of her mouth with anger, devastation, the tears start flowing all over again. She's pregnant. Hear me out, please, please, please. It was a mistake. It was never intended to be anything serious. I just, the only way that I could put it is that I just gave into the temptation. And to be quite frank, he pauses. 
and he's thinking, his wheels are turning. You know, I never had an urge to have an affair. Don't get me wrong, like I've seen other attractive women, but I've never ever had the urge or the temptation as strong as it, as it was with Elizabeth. Do you want me to end your life? How do you feel like this is making me feel any better? No, 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 hear me out. The urge was almost supernatural. It was almost like I had no control. And he's slowing down his words as the wheels are turning. And he's like, I didn't want to do this. I felt like I was, like I was operating outside of my own body. Like the temptation was really strong and it had never been that way before. Bella doesn't want to hear it. Bella's not really hearing what he's saying because she's hearing with emotional, sad, pregnant ears. Oh, great. So you met a woman that made you more horny for her than you've ever been for me. Great. No, no, no. I promise that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I feel like there's more to this, like out of our control, beyond our understanding. Wait, wait, wait. What about that guy, that, that spiritual gangster, that, that, that spiritual guy that, that, that helped us out with this in the first place? I don't know. We have to make an appointment with him. He probably won't be able to see us for like six months. He's really famous, Michael. I don't know. No, just please. I really feel like if we go to him, he could help us decode this. I know you think that I'm just trying to come up with a bunch of excuses as to why I cheated on you, but I really honestly feel like there's more to this. Something is happening. Something's happening to us. There's a reason why the two of us were chosen, and I don't feel like it's for us to offer assistance or, or guidance to this poor, lifeless, literally lifeless woman, Isabel. With Bella's exhaustion came defeat and giving in to the suggestion to go see the spiritual gangster, okay? So she was like, well, what do we do? Do we just wait eight months to see him? I know he's backed up. No, we just show up. We just show up and he'll probably only give us about five minutes of his time, but that's probably all we need. Bella's still angry. She goes upstairs, her parents are asleep. She grabs some pillows, she flings it at him. She says, you can sleep down here. I will sleep in my old room and we will figure out what time we're gonna get over there in the morning. Fine, <laughs> fine, fine, fine. They lay down, neither of them sleep very well that night. They wake up the next morning, they try to head out before her parents wake up because she really doesn't wanna offer any more explanations, none. They get up, they get their stuff, they head over to the spiritual gangster's office while he's talking to his secretary, he sees them and he's like, oh God, you know, his shoulders deflate. And he's like, these guys, what is going on? And so then he takes a look at how exhausted and exasperated and just emotional Bella is and he empathizes and he says, just hurry up and come in, you know, guys, I really can't keep doing this, these impromptu visits. I can't, I have, I'm running a business. And they express understanding, but they also express their desperation. All right, well, what's going on? So they do their best to fill him in with as much information in a small amount of time. And he stops them and he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You are being encouraged to end her life? Yes, that's where we are now. We're being encouraged to end someone's life because we're getting the impression that, that my life is on the line. And so then he revisits Michael's point of being supernaturally drawn to Elizabeth. And every time he says it, Bella rolls her eyes, but the spiritual guide is like, well, wait a minute, he has a point. And he slows down, he closes his eyes, and he, in, within three seconds, he reopens his eyes and he says, you know guys, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this, this person, Isabella, she knows that I'm trying to access her aura and she's blocked herself off to me. But what I will say, from the last times that you guys have came in here, I was always able to pick up on a strong sense of desperation. This, this sense of missing and longing. 
And so he said, it will not be a far-fetched idea that the two of you have been manipulated from day one. He said, I cannot confirm this because again, I no longer have access to her aura. But what I can say is you may very well be a large part of a larger plan, which is to get Elizabeth to join her mother in the spiritual realm. That is where that desperation may be coming from. And that is where that feeling, that supernatural feeling that you had to sleep with Elizabeth may have came from. And there's a little bit of relaxation with the revelation that they're getting from the spiritual guy, but then there's also pent up frustration because they're like, well, what do we do now? How do we know that that Bella isn't going to lose her life in the middle of us trying to figure out what's true and what's not and, and how we got here and how we move forward. One thing is always for certain. If certain things don't work out within a certain amount of time, everyone goes right back to square one, where they belong, where they end up being trapped. Well, how long is that? I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. And quite frankly, I couldn't tell you how to stop everything either. I, I just, I lost access to her. And, and she, she was where I was, was pulling my answers from that, that, that feeling, that guy, that's what, that is what guides me to what's going on in that spiritual realm, in the realm that surrounds her. So in the meantime, maybe just lay low, lay low. Guys, you know, I hate to, to send you on your way with such uncertainty, but you really have to go. You have to go. I've got, I've got clients, you know, I've got a full schedule. And they, you know, express their understanding and they make their departure. They get to the car and they're just sitting there with, with no idea where to go and what to do. And so eventually Michael says, well, you know, we might as well just lay low at your parents' house for a bit. You know, I just have to run back to the house to get some stuff for work and, and if you need anything, I can grab it for you. And she just shrugs and she's like, I mean, yeah, sure, I guess, I don't know. So he heads back to the house, Bella's in the car. He goes in there, he begins to grab some of his work items and he hears some clashing downstairs. And so he pauses and he wants to call Bella, is that you? But then if it's not her, all we've done is alert whoever is downstairs that he is upstairs. And so he thinks, maybe I'll just figure it out quietly or climb out the window. I don't know. But if it is Bella downstairs, we need to figure out if she's in trouble. This is his thought process. So he tiptoes to the head of the stairs, the top of the stairs, tiptoes down one steps, tiptoes, tips, toes down the other and of course it creaks and then he hears Elizabeth's voice Michael I know you're up there and he releases this exasperated sigh and he you know makes his way down the rest of the steps and he's like Elizabeth what are you doing I told you it's over and she still in a heated angry frenzy she says this is not over you don't get to end this with me you don't get to end this with me at all. And she goes into this heated debate with him and she starts flinging stuff in the kitchen all over the place. And he's thinking, oh my God, if Bella hears this, if she sees Bella, what if she really sets out to kill Bella? Oh my God. So he's like, I gotta do something. Okay, 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 fine. Fine. What, fine what? We don't have to end things. And he's thinking, oh my God, what have I done? We don't have to end this. We, we might be able to make this work. My grandmother just called me. Perfect timing. We don't have to end this. He says we, 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 can, we can figure this out. We can, we can find a way to make this work. Just please bear with me. So do you think I should keep the baby? I, he's trying to think quickly. He's like, if we continue doing this, I don't know that I'll be able to devote as much time with the baby involved because I don't, 
I don't want to leave my wife. I, I'm thinking maybe I can do this with the both of you. You, you got to meet me somewhere in the middle, Elizabeth. And she's just standing there and he's thinking, I cannot believe she's accepting this. If she is, then I'm just gonna keep going with it. I'm just gonna keep rolling. I'm just gonna keep running with this. What am I gonna tell Bella? So eventually, her shoulders deflate. She's got a pot in her hand and her other arm, her other hand is balled up and she releases the fist and she said, well, fine, fine. Well then, what do we do now? Well, we still have each other's number. Just, just wait for me to get back in touch with you. Just, let's just take it easy. In the meantime, can you please head out towards the back because my wife is parked in the front and if we're gonna make this work, it needs to be kept a secret. She reluctantly agrees and makes her departure with one last promise. If you screw me over, I am going to kill you. Just as nonchalant as can be. And he's thinking, how did I not see any of these qualities before? And he says, okay, with a curt nod. And with that, she was gone. He exhales, grabs the stuff that he went in to grab, and he immediately makes his departure out the front door, plops down in the front, and he looks at Bella and he says, we have a problem. This is episode one, and I promise you will not have to wait forever for episode two. I already have it planned out. In the meantime, what I will say for you guys is I did do an interview with my grandmother. She's on the phone. We're working on editing it to where we can enhance her voice so that you guys can hear her because obviously we are not in the same state. I asked her questions that some people have inquired about. They wanted me to ask her, and I'm gonna try to get it up on one of my other exclusive platforms. You can click the link in my bio, you can become a member, and I also plan on posting a documentary that I was working on where, I don't wanna say secrets, but controversy and suspicions where certain diseases are concerned. Because as a nurse, you know, I can't steer away too far from, from, from where I started, from what motivated and encouraged all of the storytelling in the first place. So stay tuned, you know, join my other platforms, see what else I have going on there for you guys, explore my album. I've had my hands in so many projects for you guys, and that's why you had to wait forever and ever, amen, but I appreciate your patience. Thank you so much. Let me know if you guys wanna see some more Get Ready With Me videos. I, my hair is doing whatever it wants to do and I'm okay with that. And I have just been basking in it, okay? Thanks so much. Check out my guy Blake Quake Beats, my editor, and uh, we'll chat later. Bye!